Ben Goodwin here, and eventually we will like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, help promote, make up my channel. So we're going to be reviewing another exciting episode of The Mandalorian, filled with spoilers and, and just epic greatness. Mandalorian is really doing a great job with the expanded universe, whereas the sequel trilogy chose to disregard, overlook, or just flat out disregard a lot of the expanded universe characters that are absolutely amazing and great. The Mandalorian feels like it's backtracking and that it's introducing all those things you have all these characters showing up and they look accurate to the source material you have had Bo Katan, Boba Fett you've had uh, now Ahsoka Tano in this episode you've had some pretty amazing extraordinary things in here they name drop Admiral Thrawn that along with uh, the planet Typhoon uh, there's just so many things in this series that makes it feel like it's part of the books part of the video game Games, that it's including all that stuff, whereas the sequel trilogy just threw all that stuff out the window and went with their own thing, which held in comparison. So in this particular episode written and directed by Dave Filoni himself, um, we get to see Ahsoka Tano. We get Baby Yoda finally fleshed out. He gets his name dropped too. It's like Grogu. It's not something that just rolls off the tongue that sticks. It's something that sticks like Baby Yoda. But this episode did do a lot to service the overall plot. We finally reached the point that we were being driven to this whole season where finding a Jedi to train Baby Yoda. And now we get a, a sort of course redirection where she's uh, what we should have seen all along refusal to train the baby and there's just a lot of or extra so the baby's too old to train but we get to really flesh out this character uh, who is a main character on the show baby yoda has been a main character and he's such a mystery much like the origins of origin of yoda the original yoda not baby yoda but yoda himself this character is a mystery, and we're finally starting to flesh it out. So we get a backstory about how this character was training at the Jedi Temple and was put off into a safe place. And we get the name. We get a lot of great action. There is some extra... From the opening moment, we get some really extraordinary action, really atmospheric, and... The way that they use the lighting of the sabers themselves and to see these kind of lightsabers here and to see lightsabers just in general on here is quite extraordinary in itself. So Rosario Dawson really pulled off the role. Uh, even her voice seemed to be different as she embraced and embodied this character of Ahsoka Tano and just nailed it. Absolutely. She was action-packed, very action-oriented, just all over the place in this episode. And uh, a small clash we get between her and the Mandalorian was to absolutely die for more so than any other action in here but there is a lot of action in here a lot of great action mostly on Ahsoka Tano's part we do get some of those western elements with the Mandalorian having his own standoff and some things like that that were very interesting to see but the most interesting things for this episode were to finally be introduced to Ahsoka Tano in live action for to learn more about Baby Yoda and, and to have this sort of team up with Ahsoka Tano that pays off and now we're going to be taking the story in a different direction. We know that Grand Moff Gideon is still out there and all that. So the, uh, atmospheric wise, action wise, um, and in terms of characters being fleshed out, there was a lot of substance in this episode in comparison to earlier episodes this season. I would not say that it's the best, but I would say that uh, I, I would actually say the last episode is still the best, but this one really did a great job and the Mandalorian is just slowly stepping up its game as the season progresses. It's quite extraordinary and I am 
greatly looking forward to whatever comes next, especially with whoever is supposed to end up training this baby Yoda. It would be extraordinary, in my opinion, uh, if we could get Luke Skywalker to show up when it comes to going to Typhoon and you know, admitting himself like a, like a beacon for the galaxy for any living Jedi out there to be able to sense him and come to him. So I'm very curious to see where that goes. Normally, uh, I, I would do a bias section, but this one, I don't have any particular personal bias, so I just jump right into the negatives of this. I will have to say that the Mandalorian himself Pedro Pascal, the Mandalorian, I, I can't remember what his, uh, if, if they've even said his real name or what his real name is. Uh, but what I will say is that the Mandalorian is the least interesting character on here, honestly. Um, it, it just seems like he's always taking a uh, backseat to other secondary characters, supporting characters that really drive the plot forward, the narrative, the action, and all that. And... The Mandalorian himself, this kind of doesn't do a whole lot as here he teamed up with Ahsoka, but Ahsoka mostly did everything in this episode, very much to the way that it felt like Cara Dune did most of the work in the, in the last episode. And before that, it felt like Bo-Katan and her Mandalorians were doing most of the stuff before that. So there's just... It feels like the Mandalorian really needs to step up to the forefront and, and get some really intense action-packed scene, uh, lengthy action-packed scene, some really uh, outnumbered showdown. As the first season, he, he had some better showdowns. This season, he hasn't done a lot himself. Uh, so... That's one of the negatives for me, is that the uh, main character of the show keeps coming off like a secondary or supporting character to supporting characters. Uh, another thing I will say in this episode is the main villain of the episode uh, kind of fights too well against Ahsoka Tano compared to what we've seen Ahsoka Tano be able to do and accomplish. Uh, it was surprising to see that this woman could hold up so well against her. Um, but, you know, I, I guess this is more for the normal audiences that aren't too attuned to, to what all's happened in the animated shows with Ahsoka Tano and all that. However, this is catering to that crowd. The show is catering to the Expanded Universe crowd with the Admiral Thrawn name drop and some of these characters that are showing up. So, another thing is the logic of Baby Yoda being too old to train. Well, I'm not sure how old these characters have to be, this Yoda species has to be, before they start, you know, being able to act like adults or more like teenagers or whatever. I am not sure how the whole aging thing works for them because they are still a very mysterious species and all that in Star Wars lore. And Yoda himself, you know, he was pretty old <laughs> at the time of his death. He was pretty old even at the time of, like, the prequel trilogy. But how old do they have to get before they're not like babies? Because Baby Yoda, uh, I, I'm, I'm just very curious about how all that works. And the logic that she doesn't want to train him, though, because the whole Anakin stuff, you know, she's seen firsthand what happens when you train somebody that's too attached to something that's a little bit too old and has already formulated, uh, has already, you know, embraced that type of thing where attachments, you know, before. Uh, it, it's just. It's a kind of a stretch at this point. Yes, I understand that we had those experiences with Anakin and he was too old. They all warned that he was too old to be trained because he, he's at that age where I, he's got attachments. And whereas Jedi's grow up selfless with no attachments, really. However, yeah, it doesn't really make that much sense because they do have an attachment to their Jedi Masters and all that that they grow up around. And a, a, a 
the thing is, is that there aren't really any Jedi's left. If you leave this kid untrained, untamed, uh, with somebody like running in circles with a bounty hunter and all that, it, it just but the logic is a bit of a stretch to say. I'm not going to train this kid because I've seen firsthand what can happen, but I will let him go off with you and potentially end up, end up in the wrong hands. I mean, it's better to try to delicately navigate this yourself than uh, just leave it up to a whim, leave it up to, well, if nobody trains him, he won't be that bad, he won't be that dangerous. I wouldn't bet on it. Um, so that logic there for me is a bit of a stretch. So, uh, overall score, I'd say 7 out of 10. I wouldn't really rank it that high. Yes, I do enjoy the planet, the atmosphere, all that. The, it was All that was incredible. It was somewhat reminiscent of Dagobah, swampy and misty, and all that was really cool. And then they had the little training sequence. They had, you know, just so much of the expanded universe stuff in there. And to see the way these people are just kind of, like, it felt very Game of Thrones, too, in a way, with the corrupt roller and all that. But 7 out of 10 for me, Ahsoka was amazing. Absolutely stunning, amazing, and all that stuff. But um, and getting Baby Yoda fleshed out uh, and getting the next place to go to and seeing where this adventure could head next. But all that aside, uh, Mandalorian is still not much of a main character. The big... Uh, Battle here wasn't that wasn't that impressive or great because I don't really buy this woman could hold her own against Ahsoka that well, and the whole logic of not wanting to train the kid and just the whole inner workings of how, how do the how old do these species have to be before they before they really start to mature? Oh, and I'm referring to Grogu, his name. Um, that kind of stuff there, but the Admiral Thrawn name drop, getting this character fleshed out, having Ahsoka so well done in live action and having some great action from her, seeing lightsabers, those lightsabers in action. All that stuff was great stuff. The Typhoon mention, that's where we're going to go. Probably introduce more Jedis, hopefully. That's going to be really great stuff. So 7 out of 10 for me. The only reason it doesn't get a higher score is because Mandalorian... <laughs> himself and the excuse of not to train baby Yoda feels just like an excuse at this point um and then the main villain being lackluster and just the fact that Mandalore the Mandalorian doesn't really do much himself in supporting characters do more those are my flaws with the logic and story uh, the story of this and the logic of it but seven out of ten great episode Really impressive episode. Gave me all the substance I wanted to drive the plot forward. And that's what I needed. So, 7 out of 10. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. How you felt about it. Was it awesome? Was it great? Was it the best episode ever? How much did you enjoy Ahsoka Tano? How much did you enjoy getting Baby Yoda's name dropped? How much did you enjoy hearing ad about Admiral Thrawn? Hearing Typhoon? All that great stuff. Let me know in the comment section below. Stay awesome. Rock on.